Like you're talking wait, college wait. level or all of them? Uh, level. At this point, college level, but all the way around. Cool. I, I mean, I mean, I can go back to like sub college level, but I've already been there. Uh, no, it's just way too much money for way too little. I, I, I mean, it's all agendized. Did I just make up a word? Agenda. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean <laughs> they they have an agenda. They want want people. They they want you to learn all, all this history that's getting re remodified. So like the way it really happened. I mean, I I, I fell victim to that too, man. Because like 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 the Holocaust to me isn't quite what the Holocaust I've come to learn really happened. Right. And, and it's spooky shit. Because when you read books that were part of your learning, learning curriculum, they realized, oh man, but they, they made me think it happened this way. And it's, it's really scary, and it's a sad, it's a sad thing. That's all I, that, that's just one, one, one pterodactyl's point of view. I will, with that I will pass. Somebody. Who's next? Get the camera off me. <laughs> um, I hate that education's become a, a lecture as, instead of conversation. Amen. I think it's stupid that some guy who doesn't even necessarily have any education background chooses curriculum. Uh, I think it's ridiculous that math, science, history, and English are valued over everything else that you could possibly learn for some reason. Um, I hate that they teach you in a school that's shaped like a box, in a room that is a box, at a desk that is a box, but they want you to think outside the box. <laughs> um, I, I hate the hierarchical system of schools where students are truly made to feel like they have zero power and zero voice because it's really the, the dictatorship of the teacher. Um, and that's not really a knock on teachers. The teachers only know how to do it so well, you know? I think we really need to rethink our education system. We had all those Save Our Schools bumper stickers last week. I think they should have said revamp our schools. I don't want to save our school systems the way they are. I want them to be good. I want them to be okay. I think that's a good point. Like, when was there a time when our education system wasn't so sucky? And was it reserved for a few people at the cost of everybody else? Now everybody can go to school, sure, but wealth is going to determine what kind of school you go to and how good the school it is, right? And I think, too, that, like, you know, there's this idea of a majority tyranny of thought, right? And I think that we're taught the majority tyranny of thought throughout our schools and that America is the best country in the whole world. And then, uh, America! <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah! Yeah, right? We're taught that in school, essentially, right? And so when you go out into the world and you start like having to question or being presented with things that show that America maybe isn't the best country in the entire world, and maybe there are some legitimate problems that we should address, uh, you're labeled as like an extremist or an outcast or, or something, and your ideas aren't taken seriously. Or you get suspended for two weeks for not standing up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Or you there is no America's definition of freedom is so narrow that like if you move beyond it then you're no longer an American and you're no longer a I also forgot to mention that the cost of college is completely and utterly ridiculous at all levels. I've always been of the thought that if you go to a community college where you live it should be free. If you go to a state university where you live, it should also be free unless you want to live on campus, in which case it should be very, very cheap to live on campus and eat on campus. I uh, think they, it should be free if you're getting decent grades or if you're being like, uh, you know, like, like, as oh, long as yes. it seems like you're pulling your weight or you just need to be placed somewhere with a different teacher or something like that. But like, I think for, in order for it to be completely free right now, you, you should at least have to show that you're but I would actually come back and argue to that that test scores and grades don't necessarily show effort. Sometimes teachers really do do a bad job and they fail or get exactly. There's so many different ways that you can be a bad test taker or bad on your scores, but still be learning an awful lot. When it became a for a profit, when all of a sudden. Uh, the administration get paid so much money and now it's for a profit. So they take from the schools. If you look at ASU right now, everything's hurting, but I haven't drove through ASU since I went there. It's such a different thing. All the student buildings are, it's almost like a farm. 
You know, they're yeah. putting in all the small, all the getting ready for all these students to make all this money. You know? it's, it's pretty scary. And the quality of education, too. I always think, too, like, what is the purpose of school, right? And when you hear, like, in mainstream society and when you're going to school and all these things, like you gotta go to school so you can get a job, so that you can yeah. work. Right. You gotta go to school so you can be a worker. Amount yep. to something. Uh, well, well, and even like amount to something. But what are you amounting to? Like most of us come out of school with with I, well, debt, debt, like plus mass hours amounts of, of debt, of work a you, week. Yeah, and you have to get a job immediately because you have to start paying oh, back your debt. So you fall into some like, you know, maybe a little bit more than a minimum wage job or whatever, but you're stuck in that. You can't get out of it, right? Well, how about, so. How about an 18 year old first day of college? college classes, you got to buy your books, right? The books have totally gone up, but I'm just saying, what's the first thing that's camped out right outside the bookstore? Freaking tables of credit card companies yep. galore Amen. a mile just lying in the sidewalks. Here, 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 don't make me have the great party boy out again. <laughs> I'll do it. I have no here. fear. But uh, education is the foundation of, of everything, basically. You know? Just the knowledge. Knowledge is power in a way. You know? so I it used to be that It should way. be open source, you know? Knowledge should be free. If you're willing to learn it, you know, that's what it's all about. You've got to want it. Is there a good Because you see the uh, Siemens company, they wanted to open a factory somewhere, like, uh, I don't know what state, but they wanted to open a factory. And uh, they did all the research and they found out they're not going to make it here in America because the workers were too friggin' dumb to assemble stuff. <laughs> so that just tells you our basic education system. <laughs> Well, the definition of education that you learn in uh, instructor certification training is that um, education is the act of making the student's mental model of the world more closely correspond with reality. Oh. Can we hear that That's one more time? That's what they you in school. Can you say that again, please? That's education right? is the act of making the student's mental model of the world more closely correspond with reality. And that's what the state says education means. Well, that is what education is. That's the, you know, making people better understand what's going on, which they're not actually doing. That's the problem. I mean, you, that's what everybody's here is, is talking about. You're graduating from school and, like, you don't know anything or, you know, whatever. You know, you don't know how to do anything. Um, or It's fine. Like history? You can't get a job. Yeah, you can't get a job. You don't have skills that you're really Yeah. Um, like what's happened in the past, history books. Yeah, um, yeah, Howard Zinn calls that the mythologization of history. You know, if you learn like what did, like if you learn a version of history that didn't actually happen, that doesn't help you see how people make decisions in different situations, so you're not learning anything you can apply to life in the present. So, it also uh, provides like a false sense of, of reality, right? Like. Because, I mean, you think about, we, we've made, like, George Washington and all these people, like, these big, gigantic heroes, right? These larger-than-life images that could do no wrong, right? But, like, that gives you a false sense of, like, the fact that, oh, I could do that, too, someday, and I could do no wrong. And then when you do do wrong, because you're a, you're a human being, you get this, like, complex about it, right? So it's just, like, these, these old, whole ideas don't only influence, like, how our politics work, they influence how we interact with each other, too. Uh, there's okay. Something else I hear everybody here talking about is um, uh, it's called the building block theory of education, which means you start out with simple ideas and then you use that to build up to more complicated ideas. I mean, but that depends on like 
people are also talking about, education being a two-way process. Um, you know, you've got to have discussion with your students or get to know them somehow so that, you know, you can find out what ideas they're starting out with so that you can then, you know, start, build up from those, those ideas to the ideas you're trying to teach them about. Um, for example, uh, my dad was a teacher um, in uh, the uh, uh, in the automotive shop at a high school, uh, where I later went to high school, um, and he realized eventually that he was spending all day trying to teach kid, you know, teach these students uh, a syllabus that had been invented by college educated people even though these kids had no intention to go of going to college so basically it was his job to make them so frustrated with the education system that they would <laughs> drop out and then grow up to be the next generation of manual laborers yep. so it was he basically realized that it was against the law for him to give his own students an effective education wow <laughs> yeah, i was wondering um have to do with the fact that we're living longer before the education in the 40, you know, their lifespan wasn't there, so their school system was packed. Well, now we don't need some of these jobs, we don't need anymore. So, is that education model still effective for today's kids? You know what I mean? Because we don't need to rush people out because their population is so huge, you know what I mean? So, they have to like slow down that process, maybe, you know what I mean? Like. I don't know if that makes sense. And like we have 12 year olds that are coming up. Yeah, you know, you know when they say, oh, today the new, the new 20 year olds are the eight new teenagers or the 20 something year olds, you know? They always say that about the generation, you know? So is today's like 10 year olds, the teenagers, and then the, you know, the, I don't know. I don't know. Everybody grows up faster kind of thing? They redefine the 20s. Yeah, they're slowing down the pace of the of that because I don't know this is why I have all these people good. rush. Well, well no, they need, need to buy the product. I know they need to work. And I just wondered about that. If the education model is the same. Well, I think the education model has been the same. I mean, I'm not super familiar with education history, but basic understanding. I don't know about like saying your parents. Like your, I'm sure your parents took a they went to school, their courses are all totally different than the courses their sixth grade versus our sixth grade. Is their sixth grade class equivalent to like oh, our senior cool. level of school? Well, what I you know what I mean? Grade, it's like grade. or like our, our great great grandmas and stuff. Right. You know, they only had what to fifth grade or sixth grade. I was curious about it and I looked it up a while ago. Um, I think it's in every 30 years, the average IQ is adjusted by about 10 points. Yeah, like, that's just one. Well, this last time around, it was actually about around 15, and they actually had to, because of that, you know, I mean, like, we all actually, they have to move it back down to 200. Because you know how powerful this country would be if that education, if, if, the, if these guys came out of school ready to first these <coughs> jobs, you know what I mean? How crazy this would be. I'd be even more impressed if, like, our education system actually encouraged people to, you know, think. For themselves, yeah, exactly. you know, instead of instead of only teaching them how to be workers, which is yeah. what I feel like it does, right? Yeah. And like you don't need to necessarily have to think very much to be a worker. You just need to have to be able to regurgitate information right. or re repeat a Logic. pattern or something like that, right? So I think that you know our culture and our society, just as as human beings, we'd be better off with critical yeah, thinking skills as opposed to and you wouldn't buy the memorization. Well, I know, <laughs> yeah, that would be, right. be a problem. <laughs> and that's a problem. Now you products. won't buy their so products. Like, really you really won't make that? their products. Like, yeah. See, that just goes back to the that the system has to be completely remade. Yeah. You know, like, we have to do something new. Because the old way sucks. Like, can we do better? Can yeah. we think of something else? And yeah. just say, hey, this could take this place. You know, no one's thinking about that. We've no. got a, a, a lot of different plans that are out there, there that are, and this education system is better. Let's use it. Let's utilize it. This uh, business model is better. Let's use that. And people just aren't using them. There's all kinds of different. The schools are about the 
are all about the number, you know, it's not about the people anymore, you know, it's all about a number, not about, you know, the Johnny Lurch song, you know, it's more about just the number. together and like growing together and you know working together to, to make something new and better and it seems like in those situations those students those kids are a lot more able to interact with people they're a lot more able to you know think and make decisions for themselves you know so I think the problem is that we just have this idea that there's nothing out there that we can do because society is so structured in one way and how could we ever beat that but you know, one thing that is great is that we, we can say, you know what, no, we're not going to do it that way and make decisions on how we do want do want to do that. If we know it, what we want to get out of education, then how do we make that happen with where we are now and the resources that are available to more us? Co-ops. More co-ops. Yeah, co-ops. Like education <laughs> co-ops. Right? Yeah, hey, exactly. Let me throw in your way. What did Guadalupe ask us to do today? Do you know? What was their solution on what else we could do out there? Try to throw this to you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? They wanted us to go do tutoring out there. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. tutoring. Yeah. They, they like the idea of the people from Occupy Phoenix actually tutoring their children. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds like it has deeply racist undertones. <laughs> I'm making fun of the people who said that, by the way. You guys are stupid. Get off your high horses. So we do have the chance to influence young minds potentially there. That works. <laughs> we can indoctrinate <laughs> no, but it's also back to the person you know they gotta want to do it they gotta they want to yeah. yeah. learn yeah. You, know, yeah, you, do. you yeah, can't you tell do. somebody who does and then people want to learn at different stages of their life you know yeah. if somebody has, finds it early some people find it late but there's always seems a time where you, you end up finding it you know but who's to say everybody's on the same pace these days you know? Yeah, and some people want to do it on their own. I know a lot of people, you know, throughout my life that have been self-taught and they're yeah. very, yeah, very skilled and yeah. wonderful people. That was actually something I talked about with Big J, the medic. He got his, um, his nurse's certification to take care of his mother who had a disease. He was an RN. Like, as going through the RN, he'd already done a lot of that stuff with his mom, so he pretty much knew what he was doing. So I think they really don't credit actual experience anymore yeah. at all. I had a public speaking class, and I told my teacher, I'm sorry I missed class, my buddy's car got impounded in LA, and I got home way late, but here's a video of me talking to 200 people at Occupy LA. <laughs> and she's like, no, that's not public speaking. <laughs> it's only public speaking if I, if I speak publicly in front of this private classroom of 14 yeah. kids I've been working with the whole semester. Like, podium. <laughs> I didn't want, like, she really obviously, said I, it to you? Yeah, no, that's not public speaking. That's I'm like, so ridiculous. I, I really, I wasn't looking for her to give me full credit for it, but I mean, she could have acknowledged that I did more than a fucking class. <laughs> like, I could have understood if I missed it and did nothing, but I missed it to speak in public. <laughs> <laughs> a trip she knew I was taking, by the way, too. Oh, whatever, it was stupid. But though, it's interesting. There's like this narrow idea of what is the right way to do things, right? We yeah. get that from our education system. You know, it's the right way. The right way to live is to go to school, you know, graduate high school, go to college, and then get a job. And that's like that's like the American dream, essentially, right? You know, I'll you do all these play football, play football, play football or be cheerleader. yeah, whatever, all these things, right? Like, you know, but like that, that, that leaves so little room for everything else in life, you know. And like, what what I realized was like I spent the last two years studying history and political theory in class, right? Which is great, and I'm thankful for the knowledge that I gained and the, the, the way I grew because of that, it's great and awesome. And then I come out here to Occupy and see, like, I'm, I'm expecting it to be like this safe learning environment and everybody wants to learn and everybody's open because that's how my classrooms were. And out here, no, 
not everybody <laughs> wants to do that or is in that mindset of how things go. So there's a real big disconnect of like what reality is when you get out of school. It's not, it's not that. It's like Ezra was saying about the syllabus. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to mention that like we kind of try and encourage our kids to be middle management now. Take a job that takes no talent, no effort, no skill. Right. You sit at a desk, Just so you, can make money. you halfway tell people what to do, you sign a couple papers and you go home. Like, I'm, I've said for a while that I think middle management helped ruin America. Like the idea of that, like this completely useless section <laughs> that's getting paid a little more than the workers and a little less than the high ups that aren't really necessary at all. Well, what it did was that it created a division, right? So instead of having workers being able to unite as being workers, right? Now you have workers, you have middle management, you have corporate management, and you have these separations played by roles. And when you have those separations, you don't have the numbers to have solidarity to overcome an unjust and exploitive system. So it's, it's a tool that they use. And this is like, you can see this throughout labor history, like in the 1930s and 1940s when they started really organizing for labor. A lot of the like benefits, like medical Medicare and, or medical benefits, and shorter working hours and better positions, middle management positions, those all kind of came out of some of the the, the uh, organizing that was done to improve labor conditions. So just I don't know, just these things that I think can relate to, for sure. So much and, it is, and it's really impressive. <laughs> How do people not see that? How do people that any any kind of authority really over over you know, your, what you do and how you conduct yourself, it's very cold. <laughs> <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> what we do have a system of rewards and things in place as somebody who's been a manager. There are more negative, there are more negative incentives and well, everything than positive ones, though. It's really unfortunate. But the, really the system of rewards, what are they doing that for? Are there, well, are they, yeah, they people using, down, makes them happy for a while. I mean, yeah, and like, you know, you're rewarded for, you know, pretty much saying, okay, yeah. so I'm a supervisor at Borders in the cafe, yeah. right, like I used to be. And I, I hated it. I hated it. It was terrible because, like, I had to try to get these people who I thought were awesome, cool, my friends, wanted, like, to wear a single uniform, right? And none of them yeah. wanted to do it. I didn't want to do it. None of us wanted to do it, you know? And I had to, like, threaten them with punishment to like make them do it and that's terrible like that's terrible that's not like that totally separates us yeah. and instead of like rallying together to be like no more dress code we like to spot you know and, like oh. that sucks <laughs> make them all little personal things <laughs> how do you think i learned that <laughs> charlie's the leader <laughs> Also at the major university level, like when I was at ASU, they don't, your teachers don't teach you anything. The TAs do all the work. Like, why am I learning? Why is the TA grading my essay? Why isn't my teacher reading it? They don't do anything. They read off the same lesson plan, the same book, the same whatever they've been doing for 30 fucking years, and they don't really care. The ones who are comfortable are comfortable, and the ones who are brand new, they're working towards the next step. They want their research grant. Nobody at the major university level is really working to educate. I think that you can see like if you look back at elementary school, I think I can remember when I stopped learn like learning yeah. in elementary school. Yeah. It was like in sixth grade or seventh grade because they just started teaching the same things over and over and over again. For from from sixth grade through high school, it was the same class all the time. And I was like, why? And they, they had different names. They were supposed to be different classes. There were different teachers. I was in a new grade apparently. But like it was all the same thing. So what happened? I got bored and fucked up. Right? Each year your book got thicker. <laughs> I have no idea why, because it's with the same information still. Each year your book got bigger. Navigating college, I heard plenty. They don't teach you anything to do. They teach you to shut up and sit down. That's exactly what they teach you, which is what they want. Well, there's a saying, uh, another, another way of uh, uh, what I'd said before. Uh, uh, the success of education is measured by the empowerment of the student meaning the ability to succeed at whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, but, you know, once again, it sounds like uh, you're all pretty much in agreement that's not happening. Um, I just, you know, I just bring this up because, like, every teacher in America is supposed to know this. Uh, this, was all, this was all in our education system. <laughs> um, and... Uh, 
Oh yeah, and the uh, reason I've I've seen that that's not happening is, um, you know, we've all got these, we've got all these different subjects, and all these subjects are supposed to be, you know, separate from each other, and everybody, you know, goes to school like and teachers go to school like with the attitude that if they teach, you know, if they get you to focus on, you know, this subject, then like that's supposed to be the solution to everything. Um, whereas, you know, life is actually made up of a whole bunch of things all happening at once that all fit together. Um, so, you know, it's hard to get people to focus their attention on just one subject when they're surrounded by all kinds of other stuff. So, you know, that's especially um, a, a problem for like uh, low income uh, schools. Like, you know, if you didn't get anything to eat this morning, it's hard to focus your attention on math, you know, or yeah. whatever. <laughs> uh, so, you know, just like dumping more and more money into a education system like that isn't really gonna solve the problem. Um, and in fact, it seems to me that, um, you know, by, there's like this <coughs> growing body of, of, of ideas we're all surrounded with that, uh, you know, stuff isn't really working in the world and like our ideas aren't working. Uh, so uh, it seems to take, you know, it, it basically keeps taking, costing more and more money to get people to not notice that. Um, there's a TED talk about how um, the more, the bigger the reward, the less incentive, there, or the less will there is to actually do really well in somewhere and uh, you know, people just want to do things to feel good. They don't care. Deep down, they don't care about monetary movement or online games. All you do is click one button and it goes to the next button. It's not <coughs> complex decision making like they used to be. Oh, but video games, movies, and television like, are really complicated, especially when you're know, talking education. They're really powerful tools, but then are they even the right tools to be using? Because we can teach kids a hell of a lot playing video games, but then is that a good thing or a bad thing? And Why is that a bad thing? Well, I mean, I could, technology I mean, isn't necessarily bad, but we do need to figure out how to use it. Like, I don't like technology. Like Jeff efficiently likes, yeah. and definitely in, in, in uh, like consideration it. of the environment. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a really huge emphasis to me. Well, I think, you know, you see, like, okay, so Facebook, social media, Twitter, whatever, right? You see that a lot of that stuff has been used in a lot of the locations around the globe right now, right? But at the same time, you also see, like, a lot of armchair activism, so to speak, where you just, like, click, like, like this cause. Look at me, I'm a good person. I saved right. this cause because I liked it. You know, but, like, it doesn't... And okay. and then you also have this yeah, yeah like the cyber Monday morning. Yeah, quarterback. well, like if you've seen so uh, so well. Some of them are, are trapped by the dollar news. I know, I know. Every That's day. It's just yeah. like, and I'm definitely not talking about they that. They can't miss a day of work because then they can't pay the bill. You know, well, but you I can't. Mean, like the what the you know what, what I mean? the. That's, the That's internet the dollar news. has like a double double edged sword, right? It can be so great because we can spend so much information through it, but at the same time, it creates like this, like. It, it uh, reiterates that immediate satisfaction. We need this now. We need to know now. And you don't when you're constantly reacting instead of instead of thinking about something. Then you don't. You just you just miss so much about what's really going on. I'm also before the computer generation, and I wonder was like the library a hub of smart people back in the day? Because like I've been able to find everything I need to on a computer for my entire life. Because old people help us. <laughs> What's up, old guys? <laughs> well, I know you guys have the, you guys have email. So when, we were, when I was in high school, DDA wasn't that long ago. Um, it, once you finished school, you were like, all right, man. Like it was like farewell to all your friends. You know, like like almost a farewell because everybody's going. There's no email to keep in touch. Yeah, that's or there was no email, so it was basically it was a different feeling. Now kids are like. Space. You know what I mean? They got the numbers yeah, for a while. True, you know, hey, check out my MySpace. And then they have ways to contact forever. You know, so. Well, that was like that. So, he, that so maybe that, that was kind of cool because you got, yeah, you that's your first maybe thing in mind. You know, maybe that's shit. why. That's how the friends I mean, they've seen at school that I'll never ever see yeah. again. You know, but in nowadays, well, they don't have to worry about that. 
You have to track people down. Oh, no, no, now it's all here from like Facebook and shit. Dot com and shit. Yeah, yeah, all that shit came back. But when I was there, you know, we, you had to deal with that. Dude. It was something like, hey, all right, well, later, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, did they still teach, like, the Dewey Decimal no, System and, and all uh, that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Did phone, you hear yeah. that they took cursive out of their... their yeah, there's no writing now They're starting, they're now starting to take cursive out of wow. schools, like, learning it. Yeah. Really? So how are we going to be able to read it? How are people going to sign their names? <laughs> That's probably part of why they want to do it. I think like, taking out I the mean, taking out the ethnic thing. studies yeah, and the art no studies are the real ones. Well, yeah, they took out art. Yeah, they took out band. They took out like PE. Somebody ethnic got rid of PE and, arts, and like art class. So it's really going to end up killing. Well, the ethnic studies are banned in Arizona. Yeah, California. It's lovely. Yeah, and it's really that's. We can teach the history of white Episcopalians, but we can't teach the history of anybody else. That's pretty much exactly it. And who sets you know? the, the agenda for the political system? White Episcopalians. White yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Bible so thoughts, if you will. Yeah. Th- wow. yeah. that's, that makes sense, too. Well, and I mean, like, that. Ju- t- to me, the wizard. as somebody who <laughs> studied history yeah. and, and political science, like, the wizard. it's important to look at who is in, who's in power or who has wealth and who doesn't, right? And if you look at our society, mostly like white men have wealth. Like you have your exceptions, of course. Everybody, you know, we have civil rights supposedly, right? <laughs> so like, you have your exceptions. But how did those exceptions like get there? Did they did they do it on their own terms, and that I'm going to be my own individual human being from where I came from and do this, or am I conforming to what society says the right way to work is, right? And so, I think I think like recognizing who does that really helps to eliminate power structures in society and class lines in society that Americans don't usually, aren't encouraged to, to think about. Well, what about like, you know, World War II, for instance? You know, it's, oh, we went over there, D-Day, we fought, we lost lives, oh, the battle. Yeah, you, you get that, you know what I mean? But they, they put it to like the soldier's perspective where, you know, I'm there, for, I'm protecting Sam, you know, we're there, I got your back, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden the story becomes like a brotherhood versus do they ever teach you, like, who funded the war? You know, who influenced Hitler? He just wasn't, like, look at our guys today, they're just not there. You know what I mean? It just didn't start yeah, now. True. You know what I mean? So you got to look at, like, do they ever educate people on who funded these wars on both sides of the plate? But no, it's always about the battles and the, 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 the lives we lost. The sensationalism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, and that over, then you're so overwhelmed by that, you, you don't, you don't look at the money trail. You know? I just you reminded me of something. I don't. Another educational thing is that like, we sort of give a pass to the slave owners from you know the, uh, the 1700s, 1760s. Like, oh, that's how it was. Like, it's not racism. It's just how it was. I, I have news for everybody. <laughs> Ever sit down. <laughs> In the 1930s in Germany, they just happened to hate Jews. That's just how it was. <laughs> that shit didn't pop up because Hitler got on a stage and said, well, if I hate Jews, you should yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, like the anti-Semitism was there, and they took it too far. The racism was there in 1776, and they took it too far. Yeah. We shouldn't give them a pass for being racist, you know? Well, that, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's absolutely No, but who funded true. that shit, you know what I mean? So they just didn't all of a sudden, like you're saying, wake up. Somebody profited from that. Who built Somebody like, propagated who Hitler built to become right, so right. powerful. Why the Halliburton making these FEMA things? Who, you know, who's making it? Who's profiting from this? Yeah. Like, who, who built those places? Who right. built the concentration camps? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But it was actually the concentration camps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> you know, and then they put the fifty year clock on the wall. You know, then they put the fifty year classified lock on it. All the fifty years, the people that were thirty years old, they're going to be dead. So now they have 50 years, they seal it for 50 years, then we won't know for 50 years. Like, and the Pearl Harbor, right? Studying, like, all the Pearl Harbor the thing that we learned from school, oh, I'll kind of find out. Oh, they knew about it, they kind of sat down. It's like, what the, you know, but all throughout school, no, nobody knew this attack, you know? It's just, <laughs> well, <I'm not> the, <laughs> you know, it's like, so for 50 years they've been teaching, and then movies sensationalize it and all this stuff, but then all of a sudden the truth comes up. Oh, oh, oh we'll just, God, have you seen that? Yeah, we'll just keep showing these now? and go with these. That's a savvy Tom Hanks movie uh, now. I want to just go protest it. Uh, <laughs> when the first one dropped, I actually did protest it heavily. Like, I wouldn't talk to people who saw that movie. Like, I was such a dick. I, you're really going to make a movie about 9-11, like, three years after it happens? Really? That's what we've come to in this country? Yeah. Well, no, you look at that's a crazy issue, too, because... 
We spent sixty billion dollars investigating Barry Bonds. So you could have one month. But all those patriots. So Barry Bonds could have one month house arrest. But we only spent ten billion dollars, or whatever it was, on 9/11. We spent sixty on a baseball player in one of the most terrific days. We spent ten. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. Uh, well, it's because they wanted to, like, they had a freaking congressional saying, hearing yeah, about it. You know. Why is there congressional hearings about Barry Bonds? <laughs> why am I watching Roger Clemens at a yeah, congressional yeah, hearing? Why, why? Because the government wants us looking one way. Oh, we got to make look sure our sports are clean. Oh, this look, is so well, much more important. Look at the money they spent. Look at the money they spent. Sixty, like, million dollars or billion. It was a There's a reason for it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 You know, there's a reason that they spent. They stretch it out because they get paid. They're on the clock. Right. Well, but with the, the Barry Bonds thing and the spending money, for one thing, it shows that one our, month's house arrest it's the more final important for our culture and our society, according to the federal government, to be concerned about what Barry Bonds is doing. Why? Because it sets a moral code for everybody else, right? If Barry Bonds can do this, then that means everybody else can because he's held up on this high pedestal. If Barry Bonds can't do that, then everybody else can't either, right? So we're, we're being taught morals by our government yeah. when they decide what is more important to look into. Somebody, I don't even know who Barry Bonds is or what the problem is, but like, Baseball I guess player on steroids. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So is it more important <laughs> that we're concerned about what this individual is put, choosing to put in their body? Or is it more important that we figure out like what the truth was behind yeah, 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 right. being attacked on 9-11? And they right. even said that, like, him being on steroids, because everybody in baseball is on steroids at the time, and that it was, like, uh, polluting our, our country or something, but, like, you telling us to pay attention to the sports when we were attacked not three years ago is polluting our country. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Right? No, but they don't want us to do it. No, exactly. So. But we'll know in 50 years. And we're all freaking dead. The ones that grew up won't really... They won't be educated on it because they'll rewrite the books. I played a, a computer game on a TV, you probably remember. Uh, it's called Centurion. And the, the goal was to conquer all of Europe and, and uh, North Africa. And um, you, know, you have you build your like armies. And uh, over time, your, your uh, warriors will become restless. And what you would have to do is have tiger fights and have you know, various sports events to appease the people, calm them down. Right. And that's what we're doing here. It's just we have one every Sunday now. In the game, it was you know once a month. It'd probably be all right, or maybe once a year. But now it, it's every day. You can you can get this entertainment. That's um, yeah, yeah. so that's a distraction. Um, yeah, and also we need to be like I mean you don't like. Uh, all the um, stupid movies or whatever that are out there, but I still watch some of that stuff just to see what the idiots are watching. Just yeah. 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 Too, it's, it's interesting though that some of the really dumbest movies are like masking such great like political undertones, like Idiocracy. Oh, the I average moron yesterday. can go watch that and be like, oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> but somebody like us goes and watches yeah. that and they're like, holy oh, shit, shit, that's where yeah. I'm living. <laughs> 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 yeah, they can't tie it outside. Yeah. The but what sucks is that like, Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sucks is people. people no, are no, I have, I have a point. I have a point. But the point is that like it gives us this idea that because like we somehow have been able to see things differently that everybody else is stupid, right? And like, but in a way, like in a way, like some people are stupid. Fine, okay, great, whatever. But like in a way, they've been that's been forced yes, upon them by the yes. system, and if they haven't been given the opportunity to be anything. I but, do not accept that we are stupid. Yeah, exactly. For the majority. Exactly. I do We're not, not accept that. Like people are not stupid. Like, I mean, if you think. About it, people are living in this horrible, fucked up, stupid system that we have, and they're still alive. If we can figure at least survive, <laughs> like, like we, we don't, we don't have like you know, we don't have like social networks that we can that we're that Stupid we're super bad. close with, you know? Yeah, like we, if we can survive this bullshit, we can do better, you know? We can do better. If we can build big, gigantic buildings, we can create a system that is inherently free. Why for survive? What's, what's our what's our purpose? You know what I mean? It goes back to what's our Give us the city. Do we even know? Are we like, occupying the city? We can change the office. <laughs> well, there's got to be a reason. You, there there has to be a reason for not being evil. Yeah. Well, we brought a few of these I did there. Uh, the other day on Facebook, George Washington to a more successful and more popular Adolf Hitler. And it's kind of true, because like Hitler's propaganda machine just didn't work as well. Well, look at today. Oh, go ahead. 
That's what I'm, I'm talking about, like propaganda movies. We make them all the time. Hitler made them all the time. We love them. Saving Private Ryan is a propaganda movie. Um, the The Patriot with Mel Gibson. You know, they're all it's propaganda telling us how great our forefathers were. Yeah. That's what Hitler was doing. Any... I think how many people will actually take that stuff as history? Oh God! Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, in the Patriot, movies. they won that battle. Oh, did they now? Yeah, they watch these Mark. movies. And they, they actually think that you know that's the, that's um, the most painful. We all know the truth is in the movie 1776. It's a musical, so it wouldn't lie. <laughs> oh, fucking John Adams wasn't a racist slave owner. He was a singing guy. <laughs> he was a singing guy. Go back to your propaganda. I probably said this to a few people, but... Like, you look back at the propaganda in the 40s and 50s, and you can see it sticking oh, out yeah. like a big old yeah. sore thumb. You know, like, damn, like, look at that. You see it. But it's there for but us, I, too. We I just know, I know. don't. I know. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's changed so much that you see today, and you're like, damn, you know, you know it's out here everywhere. Like, yeah. you know, like, what have I bit on? What, you know, you know it's here. Years, so in 20 years. years from now, I want to look back yeah, and go, years. Damn, I knew that was that, or damn, that one got me hard, or this, you oh, know. Oh, it's... oh, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I fell for that tree. <laughs> you know That's what, what I mean? always wanted. Like, always you know, wanted look back in twenty years to see what. Like, 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 like looking at the commercials on TV. Oh yeah, I, I, most terrible. of it I know. Some I, of most it is like, so obvious. Out, yeah, you know? it's like so Entertainment obvious. Tonight channel, you know, uh, whatever God, show that is. I saw a commercial recently. Not so Sorry if you guys watched that. <laughs> well, there's so many shows you can just try not to watch the TV and then turn it on and oh, it's just like, wow. Like well, it's Spring everywhere. We've also got it to like the double, like, like Fox News, for instance. Fox News and Fox Entertainment, well, they're the same thing, but Fox has Glee on their channel while they have horrible gay bashing hate models. You know? So they found a way to do it on both ends. No, they found a way to get. It seems to me that our system, our government system, our education system tends to teach people that there's only two ways to do things, and it's either the Republican conservative side or the Democratic liberal side. And throughout society and throughout history, there's been, like, surprisingly more than two options for how to accomplish things. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate that we've been pigeonholed into choosing between Democrats and Republicans when neither of them function well, as we can clearly see. You know, like it, it gives it again gives people the idea that there's nothing else. Like we only have these two options. We can't do anything else with it. So why even bother trying? You know, and like it's no, we can do other things. We can make it up as we go along. That's the work they're doing. You know, I'm I mean, sure we can do better. Look at that propaganda machine that that's put that into them. You know, that's freaking that's that's massive. Back to like today's football, right? Mainstream. But back to our schools. Our schools teach propaganda all the time. All Constantly. the time. Everything, okay, every day. Almost everything you learn in a history class is government propaganda. It is. You learn very little truth. Where I happen to come from, we were the first time to voluntarily integrate our school system. We actually had ethnic studies where we learned the other side of things. And we'd meet people from other places, wherever you meet people from other places. And they're like, what do you mean that, that you know... Um, What's it, what, what, who discovered America? Columbus is a racist. <laughs> what do you what do you mean that like you know Washington was a slaveholder? Like we learned these things and other people really didn't, and that was just a shock to me. That's everybody who moves from my hometown always says wherever they got was complete culture shock because they mean just ignorant. Like every book is different. Everything. Like Texas, right? They got yeah. their own history. Fuck Texas, totally warped. <laughs> yeah, you know. And that's how Daniel Boone conquered the red coats. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And then George W. Bush well, took happens, over the kingship of England. What happens is that when they teach history in school, they're only teaching one perspective. They're teaching the white man's history, right? And so you don't learn about how the actions taken by white folks negatively, and not just like negatively affected the fact that we had like the Trail of Tears for the Cherokee or that, you know, there was slavery or things like that, but like purposefully kept them down so that they could have more power, you know, and purposefully moved them out like they didn't matter and like that they weren't human beings, you know, you don't hear those human stories from other people because that's not, that's not the grand narrative of America, you know, it's ridiculous. I was really lucky in that way, in that regard, because uh, growing up in Pine, like, yeah, it's, there, it's deeply racist, it's deeply all kinds of things, it's a terrible place 
to grow up. But we, I did get the advantage because we're in Arizona, you know, of having a lot of, of education and history as far as like indigenous people went and like things like that. So that was that was that was really cool. I mean, like I can I can say at least that for right. like see there's <laughs> that Hula County that's education. Like what Alex was mentioned yesterday at the two hundred two teaching though. I thought was really relevant that normal or like in mainstream education, most school systems, you may learn about like natives, but you usually learn about like Hohokam or some other like yeah. Anasazi yeah. who aren't here anymore, right? So yeah. you're given the idea that indigenous folks and that native people aren't here yeah. anymore. So you don't need to be worried about their problems because they're not real, they don't exist, you know. And like that's terrible. Like, that's terrible. That, that's oppression. Like that is that is straight up silencing the voice of, of a large population. Okay,